Good afternoon, viewers of Seven News Television. This is your program, The Experts. I wish you to understand that in most society today or countries, governance has been a problem. There has been a happy flower. You call it in fake honey, or you like it, call it poor management of goods, the country, the population, the resources. All is lack of governance. And whenever a country is experiences poor governance, there is the tendency that issues like corruption, bribery, and you name the rest comes in. Today, we have a specialist who is going to tell us more about governance. He's a member of a civil society. He works in partnership with Transparency International Cameroon. He's no other person than Mr. Roland, Kweti teacher. Good afternoon, Mr. Roland. Good afternoon, Mr. Bisson. How are you today? Well, I'm doing great by his grace. I know uh, during the campaign period and election period, it wasn't easy with you guys. Yes, it was not very easy uh, because we were out there trying to see that everything goes as uh, it's supposed to be. Yeah, you were in the southwest region, uh, particularly in Bui, yeah? Yes. Where you had to observe the election. Not observation. Okay. We were not out to observe. Transparency International was never out to observe. Okay. I think it is clear, it's good that um, the public opinion should know this. Okay. Cam uh, Transparency International Cameroon came up with uh, a digital flat, uh, platform. A digital platform through which uh, the public uh, could... Uh, encourage others, their friends, to go and uh, vote and to denounce acts of uh, fraud during uh, the election. Yeah. Every citizen could do that. Even you, you could do it. Yeah, I know. So it was not like oh, Transparency International Heart instead of observers, observers on the field. On the field okay. No, we haven't observers. We had a people who voluntarily went down encourage others that you people should go and cast your vote and uh, please report acts of corruption through this channel. Okay, that's electoral fraud. That's electoral fraud. Yeah, we are talking, you are an expert of governance and today we are talking about governance. Yes. What is governance? Okay, governance is just a way of doing things. It's a way of doing things. All right. As simple as that. It can be good or bad. Right. You know, uh, and then we have uh, governance is subdivided into uh, different uh, topics, different branches. For example, we know of uh, democratic governance, for example, that's just what we're talking uh -huh. uh, there. And uh, we know of uh, corporate governance, corporate, yeah. that's uh, governance within enterprises. So uh, with a democratic governance, for example, uh, you see that at one moment, uh, the authorities make laws uh, to suit them rather than to suit the common man. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the, the authorities, when I say authorities, I mean the government, the government. they need to be there for the well-being of, of the common man, the population. But you will see that they will make uh, lab, uh, that's electoral laws to their, to, to their sizes and not to uh, embrace opposition. So, as an expert or a specialist in governance, what do you think the government should do in order to implicate the laws to suit the common population? Okay. <clears throat> uh, that's, the question is so broad. But if I may come back to democratic governance, I think in the case of Cameroon, uh, the government, first of all, needs to um, revisit its electoral law that's the uh, the law of uh, that's the, the the law binding elections in Cameroon. First of all, to bring as many actors as possible to the uh, electoral scene. You see, uh, the, the the voting age, for example, should be reviewed to a very much lower age, and uh, the this unique ballot issues. If it, is it is, if it is implemented, it will go a long way to reduce the cost on Cameroonian tax monies that is wasted. I mean, wasted to print, to print and to produce 
millions and millions of ballot papers for different different candidates meanwhile if we had a unique ballot paper each candidate's picture will just feature on it and each elector will just need by his finger uh, thumb to press on it and that will go a far away to reduce uh, to, uh, to reduce fraud electoral fraud because these issues of someone standing outside and saying if you bring back or the ballot paper of a particular candidate of, of, of a particular party, I give you five thousand, I give you two, I give you ten thousand. Okay, that will go that will not happen again because all the candidates will now be on a single sheet of ballot a paper. Mm -hmm. So you won't nobody will be expected to leave the the center with any ballot paper. Just last week or few days ago, there was an uh, election in Cameroon. And we are talking of democracy. Yes. And you're talking of electoral laws should be reviewed. Mm -hmm. And who do you think should do this? Uh, who should do this? It is done by the lawmakers. The lawmakers can do it. They are the initiators. The lawmakers at the National Assembly need to say, okay, the civil society has been crying we've heard their cry and uh, why can't us think about revisiting this law why can't us try by saying someone caught in electoral uh, committing electoral fraud should be sentenced to this term of uh, imprisonment or to this punishment all of that is not uh, defined somewhere the initiator here is the lawmaker Mm -hmm. The lawmakers being the parliamentarian, but as I said, that it is rather unfortunate that uh, what we're observing today is that most of the times we see falls under electoral fraud, uh, 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 that's uh, democratic fraud, uh, that malgovernance. Yeah. You see that you vote for somebody, but at the end, the person, the person no longer uh, carries the goals or the uh, the the. The, the ambitions that he tabled before you before you voted for him that you vote for me and when I go to the National Assembly I cry maybe for my salary to be increased they will give me a condition okay for your salary to be increased you must vote for this law or you must not vote for this law yeah. okay so since I will care for my stomach <laughs> rather than for those of those who voted for me I will now make a, a funny a funny law to pass through me on the detriment of the person who voted me to that office of a parliamentarian. We are talking of governance and you've talked much about democratic governance. Is electoral reviewing the electoral uh, procedure in Cameroon is it the only means of governance in the country? No, hey, not just that. Okay. As I said, uh, governance can be subdivided into several domains. Uh, democratic governance is just part of it. Yeah. We have a public governance. Public now, it uh, somehow entangles with democratic, but public now being, we can now start talking about the management of uh, public affairs or the management of uh, public funds. Now, you ask yourself, is uh, this person who is a delegate, is he qualified to be delegate or is he delegate because uh, he has an affiliation to the minister or to the governor or to a big wing in the party? Is he really there because he merits it? Yeah, that's okay? true. Now, uh, like uh, projects as well, you will see that there are communities with higher numbers of population, having lesser uh, 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 infrastructural uh, that's attention mm -hmm. than others with very small populations. I want to say, uh, look like a community where there is a school. You see, there will be a big school where the number of inhabitants or schoolgoers there are not up to what has been invested there. Meanwhile, there are other localities where uh, you see the population is there in dying needs of a school but the school is not there so uh, the misappropriation or uh, the mistransfer of priorities within the public, within the community as a result of personal gains 
is still part of mal governance yeah. okay now uh the 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 that's the, the confusion of government coffers to personal coffers too okay is, is another part of it that's still yeah. public governance and then worst of it as i was talking here about lawmakers a short while ago you look uh, like this a special criminal tribunal that is a tribunal that was put in place by lawmakers that's true we of the civil society, we have decried uh, that that uh, that tribunal does its implementation to, to no avail. That tribunal is not called for. It is of just no use. Instead, it is detrimental uh, to our efforts, our collective efforts in uh, trying to improve on the governance of our uh, of our dear fatherland. That tribunal is bad in what way? In the fact that. It tells you that if you embezzle money, can you imagine, Mr. Takam? <laughs> when you embezzle money up to a certain About amount, yeah. and then you are qualified, you become a qualified candidate to be judged uh, by that institution. Yeah. And then if you give back that money, you will go free. My God, that's nonsense. <laughs> it, gives, it makes me now feel that if I am in a position of a general manager, for example, and some money is kept at my disposal, say 100 billion, I pick it. I keep it in a bank somewhere. As simple as that. Yeah. I keep it in a bank. And the day I'm caught, I, can go, I go and bring it back. I give it to you. Yeah, but, but you know what one billion will produce to yeah, me? It will produce much money. <laughs> produce a lot of money, money per day, my That's brother. It. A lot of money. So uh, you see how legislators can joke around with uh, those people who put them in place to come out with funny laws this court we best we all know uh, i don't want to call people's names here but we know of people who have paid in what they were accused of having embezzled and they went free and then others who have paid and they've not been able to go free yeah, so you see now that it comes to it comes to rhyme with what one american ambassador used to say that it is a political instrument to distant political rivals okay uh, thanks very much mr quote i just pray we follow this report uh, viewers of seven news television Tereba followed this campaign trail and had this report that he produced talking about the campaign before the presidential election. Let's get what she, he asked for us. C'est depuis ce samedi 22 septembre 2018 qu'elle a été officiellement lancée. Si sur les réseaux sociaux la fièvre montait depuis longtemps, il a fallu attendre la date officielle pour voir les QG des candidats se bouger. La campagne présidentielle va bon train. La matinée semblait plutôt calme ce samedi matin. La fièvre est progressivement montée à mesure que la journée avançait. Une première journée marquée par la tenue des meetings des trois principaux candidats de l'opposition que sont Akere Mouna, qui lui a choisi de tenir sa convention au palais des congrès de Yaoundé. Il y avait une période, il a fait quelque chose et je l'affirme aujourd'hui. Le président Biya a résolu le problème de Bakassi de façon paisible. C'est un fait, qu'on le veuille ou non, c'est un fait. Est-ce qu'on doit, parce qu'il ne fait pas résoudre chez lui, parce qu'on est un pays sinistré, de dire qu'il ne l'a pas fait ben Ça, c'est la politique du déni. Moi, je ne le fais pas. Il l'a résolu, c'est un fait. Mais là, il échoue. Il échoue. Ensuite, Joshua aussi, lui, est allé au contact des populations dans le chef-lieu de la région de l'Ouest, ainsi que dans le Mungo. Les Camerounaises et les Camerounais pensent qu'il faut véritablement changer ce pays, comme je le pense moi. Si on pense que l'opportunité du 7 octobre peut nous faire apporter hein, du sang neuf euh, au niveau du leadership de ce pays, ben, il est absolument important de comprendre que euh, le choix, c'est celui de Joshua aussi du 7 octobre, au, 7 octobre, au soir du 7 octobre. Moïse Kamto, quant à lui du MRC, a bravé les interdictions des autorités locales pour s'adresser à des militants au quartier Bonaberry à Douala. 
Le candidat du parti univers Cabral Libi et son équipe ont réussi l'exploit de traverser cette marée humaine pour présenter leur programme aux populations de Douala le 23 septembre. Un moment où une nouvelle page de l'histoire de notre pays s'ouvre. Parce que vous avez décidé de me porter à la tête de notre pays. Et que vous avez décidé de changer le leadership de 36 ans du régime qui ne peut plus rien nous apporter de nouveau. Dans la localité de Bamenda, chef-lieu de la région du Nord-Ouest, Paul Atangandi et Philemon Lian sont allés battre campagne pour le candidat Paul Bia. La campagne 2018 a certainement pris des airs sur le territoire camerounais. Thanks very much, Tereba. The campaign is over and the election tour is over. Viewers of Several News Television, you just followed that report by Tereba, the political Dex reporter. If you're just switching on your television set, viewers, this is the program The Expert. Today, we are talking on ways of good governance in a state. Our specialists here is Mr. Roland, creative teacher, a member of a civil society. Now, let's get back to him for him to tell us more about ways of good governance in a state. Mr. Kweti, you were talking more about a special criminal court, how some people who paid back the money were released and others were not. What can be the cause of that? So, you now understand with me uh, that uh, people, that laws are being made now, uh, uh, they are being tailored uh, to suit, uh, say, corrupt individuals or to suit individual interests and not the interest of the common man or our collective interest, which is that of the state. Yeah. You know, this is not the first uh, special criminal tribunal. The first one was instituted in the early 70s, mm -hmm. yes, by um, the former head of state, His Excellency Yamadu Aijo. When they discovered that somebody embezzled the sum of 200,000 francs, they had to come out with this institution and then uh, the money was restituted. The idea behind this uh, TCS is to bring back embezzled funds. But now, if we should ask, ever since it was created, how much money has come back through all uh, this, uh, through the, the, the court, it won't be anything significant compared to what Cameroon, Cameroonians have lost. So, uh, you see, that is it with uh, poor governance within, uh, within, within, within the uh, there's a government context. Mm -hmm. Now, it, as I was saying, it has different branches. Corporate governance, for example, you want to check now corporate governance, go, start going now inside the corporations, yeah. like companies, companies, okay? You try to check to find out to see if uh, uh, stakeholders, every stakeholder, is he receiving what he deserves as dues or as benefits produced by the company okay the stakeholders are the consumers as consumers, well yeah. are the consumers having the real quality of what they are being paid money for is the publicity made on uh, on the product does it really worth what is contained inside uh, the container carrying that, that product. So there are several things. Someone may say, okay, uh, or this is a, a, a container of milk, for example. Yeah. Let's consider whole milk. Uh, this contains this amount of calcium, uh, this amount of man manganese, magnesium. If you, give, if you nourish a child with this, the child will grow healthier and healthier. Mm -hmm. But now, is it true? <laughs> Do we even have those laboratories in place to check if these labels are true? So now you see that governance is just good governance is doing 
what is supposed to, to be, be done. done. Yeah. And poor governance is doing the reverse. So if you come, you fool me, you blend, you brandish, uh, say, uh, the contents of your, of, of your products. Meanwhile, the product does not actually carry that content. That's poor governance. So what can really be the cause of poor governance in a state like Cameroon? Uh, the causes of poor governance are, are so many. But for the case of Cameroon, <laughs> <laughs> for the case of Cameroon, I would like to trace it some years back. Yeah. Before the 80s, Cameroon was an emerging economy. It surprises me people come this time and say 2035 is our year of emergence. We had already, we had great companies. We had Camship that was ensuring our mar maritime transportation. Someone could leave Limbe to Douala easily. Yeah. That was covering even the, the southern parts of, 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 of the country. I mean, our southern neighbors like uh, Gabon and other countries. We had Khmer. We was, which was the pride of Africa. Africa yeah. It was the pride of Africa. What is butter? What is butter? What happened? What, what suddenly happened? We were, we were proud of wearing shoes made in Cameroon. Cameroon yeah. Many of us know of uh, this the common shoe they used to call Batula. Batula, yeah. Eh? Tigana and all that. Those shoes were made here. Yeah. And you know one thing. For the economy of a country to grow, okay, let me not take it that big. The two of us are sitting here. Yeah. For me to have extra money in my pocket, it must come but from your pocket. Money does not come from space. That's true. I mean that for the economy of a country to grow, money needs to leave another country into that country. Okay? Cameroon was already able to sell its butter shoes to Gabon, Equatorial Guinea, Congo, and all the like. Extra money, what they call a value added, added tax, yes. was being paid was being enjoyed by those Cameroon companies but now if you kill your own company that you only want to be buying you see now that your own money is instead living into somebody's country, economy yeah. that now created a lot of uh, poverty not just that we rely so much on international organizations like the IMF the IMF gives uh, has the instruments to tell a country if its economy is doing fine or if it is doing bad. It can tell you whether you are over indebted or you are under indebted. Because it judges your economic potentials. It sees your plantations. It sees your industry. It says, okay, you can borrow this. In this number of years, you'll be able to pay it back. I enjoy when I usually go around to Lycée Classic Bafusam, Cas Bambeli, Lycée Bertoua, and many others. If you close your eyes, position you in one of these schools, call it even the Sibylan Grammar School Moliko. I mean, the structures are the same. The buildings are the same. Yeah. Never was a school created without the school structure. The, the campus was built before, uh, before uh, the school was created. But this, this around year of PTA, you should be the ones to construct your school. We've even seen new images on social media where children are sitting on the floor without lack of benches in classrooms. So uh, I want to say the causes of uh, this high level, high degree of poor governance in Cameroon uh, just because of mismanagement and then the fact that we took advice from outside. I was talking about the IMF. I did not even finish. Yeah. The IMF came to Cameroon after uh, President Aijo, who was very, very cunning <clears throat> and cautious. That man, he and the IMF were never friends. I mean, those Britain who didn't, uh, Britain who Britain in, 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 in were not very good friends. He had in confidence in them. I read one of his speeches where he once said, let us not embrace an economic system that we don't have a mastery of it. Let's better remain with us that we've been enjoying for quite some time and it's proving it's a good result. Yeah. But now, after he left, the IMF was welcomed. The IMF came to Cameroon and told Cameroonians that Cameroon was under indebted. Aijo had what I used to call the five-year development plan. Yeah, that's true. With this plan, 
he could develop a plantation somewhere. He knows that within two, three years, this plantation would have produced this amount of money. He now goes into, the, he goes and borrow money for a particular project. He comes, that project is developed. He can choose a particular region. By then, was provinces. So, okay, we are investing in schools this time around. We are investing in hospitals. He does that. Then after that, the money is paid. But the IMF came in and said the money was that we are under indebted. That's how we went in and picked money. And uh, after a while, that was 80, around 1984, 85, when we started feeling uh, the, economic the poor, yeah. <laughs> the poor <laughs> economic crisis. <laughs> That's we had finished, we had our plantation, we had our banana, for example, yeah. that we had to carry to the world market to sell, to come back and, be, and pay our debt. Now, you know that you used to sell a bunch of banana like this for 5,000, for example. That's true. You reach the international market, you've already done production, everything, you've paid the workers, transportation to the market. But you reach now the market, you discover that this your bunch like this that you used to, you used to buy for 5,000 has now you find a bunch which is like this and it is being sold for less than less five thousand what happens dumping yeah you have no right but to dump, dump or you sell at the price dictated on yeah. you by the market that's you went there hoping to receive five thousand but you saw something bigger that's greater quality than yours being sold cheaper than your and own that was the the, the the international monetary fund did not tell us that in Malaysia, in Southern America, we had competition growing there, and that by this time, these people, their own plantations too, would have been of maturity. Yeah. And so, be careful, don't count on this banana or this palm oil or this rubber for or to pay your debts. So, you see how that extreme poverty came in. Amen. When it happened like that, they again came now like the Messiah. I mean, this very international monetary fund and the World Bank, they came like the Messiah. They said, oh, come to me, I will borrow money to you. Come to me, I will give you money. Because 1988, I think that was October or November, the government was unable to pay salaries. I mean, salaries to civil servants. Yeah. yeah. These guys came in, they said, okay, come to us, we will borrow you money to solve your social problems. But now, at what cost? These are our conditions. Yeah. Condition number one, and the worst, privatization of your companies. You will privatize your companies, and then, because you don't have, maybe, the, the know-how yeah. to manage them. <clears throat> and who does the evaluation of your company? It is still the IMF and the World Bank experts. It means that I have my pen, Okay, I've, I don't know if you want to sell the pen, but you oblige me to sell the pen. But at the same time, you, do, you don't even give me that possibility to tell you how much I bought the pen yeah, yeah. or how much I want to sell it. You tell me this pen's value is 10 francs CFA. Okay? Yeah. Then, at the same time, at the same time, how many nationals had that capital to be able to buy the, yeah, the these companies? Okay? Uh, was this was it AES? Those who first of all took uh, our electricity company. Yeah, yes, so yeah. now, those guys had been in Uganda. I read about the company. Yeah, they got money from the from the World Bank, the World Bank Group, a group I know gives loans to countries and not to Indians. private corporations. But I learned they got money for the, from the bank to invest in Uganda. And uh, yeah, they came in Cameroon. We all knew about the so-called common delestage, which was now, we were calling it the testage. <laughs> that this is hatred. Because for just no time can you pass 24 hours without a power failure. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you, you now see how that extreme poverty came in. Yeah. Work, they took these companies. They did not only take them, but they will say no. The man force is too much. We don't need 100 people mm -hmm. to do this. They have now to start laying off workers, my brother. I mean, a lot of mystery and frustration Kimmy. established itself in Cameroon amongst parents. Yeah. Can you imagine you are unable to send your child to school? Your child is sick. You're unable to take that child to the hospital. You don't have money. Okay. At the end of the month, your landlord will be visiting you, will be coming to you <laughs> for his rent. 
Okay? So many people died even because of that. Poverty now got itself so established to the point that guys had to do everything possible to leave. You cannot use your own hands to press your neck to, to, to death. Yeah, it's that's impossible. True. You must need some assistance. It can be a rope. It can be something like a knife that you can just cover. I just do it. Yeah. But for you to press it, you cannot. So guys had now to develop different mechanisms to survive. And the second one now, which is um, even disturbing, is um, you know when uh, President Bia took power, his, um, his power was threatened. I think that was 84. Yeah, April. 84. His power was threatened. And after that, he needed some sort of assurance. The people around him were considered to be people of confidence. Yeah. He could not, they were the people who could go down to the field to gather support for him, to tell the population that this is the best, this is a champion. And at the same time, can you bite that finger that puts a chew in your mouth? No way. You cannot. <laughs> so, he had no, no, he, that's, he was like obliged not to, uh, to, not to censor these guys too much because they were those. To protect him. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much, Mr. Kweti. Let's follow this report by Levis Onana about Teacher's Day. He was celebrated on the 5th of October, 2000. And 18. Let's get what Levis has to say. Ils sont venus nombreux des quatre coins du pays pour célébrer la 24e édition de la Journée internationale de l'enseignant ici au Palais polyvalent des sports de Yaoundé. Pour faire d'une pierre deux coups, le gouvernement camerounais, par le biais de ses illustres représentants, tels le gouverneur du centre, le préfet du Fundi et bien d'autres, ont remis des distinctions honorifiques aux heureux récipiendaires en signe de reconnaissance. Un acte apprécié par certains qui n'ont pas caché leur satisfaction, bien que de manière fondamentale, rien ne change dans leur quotidien. Mais le même rituel, bon, c'est peut-être au niveau du cérémonial comme cela, mais au-delà du cérémonial, hein, euh, il y a ce que nous faisons comme travail. Et autour de ce travail, il y a tellement de révolutions, tellement, vraiment. Le droit à l'éducation, c'est aussi le droit à un personnel qualifié. C'est le thème choisi pour célébrer les enseignants en cette année. Un corps de métier qui a toujours connu des frustrations multiples allant de la formation de base, en passant par la prise en charge de ces produits qui peinent toujours à joindre les deux bouts, même après beaucoup d'années de loyer service rendu. Euh, j'ai 34 ans de service, oui, j'ai pris le service le 1er octobre 1984. Beaucoup d'espoir, euh, nous aimerions vraiment que la recommandation qui avait été arrêtée euh, en 66, qu'on puisse au moins... Euh, de temps en temps faire un effort pour que cette recommandation-là aboutisse, notamment la formation de base, que nous, nous regrettons beaucoup parce que au niveau de l'éducation de base, le, le recrutement, euh, le diplôme de base n'est pas le même. Sous fond de réforme, mais aussi d'assainissement de la profession, cette journée a connu une forte mobilisation malgré toutes les griefs qu'a connu récemment la communauté éducative au Cameroun. Thanks very much, uh, Levy, for that report. Down on the feet of October. 2018. Viewers of Seven News, if you're just switching on your sets, this is your program, The Expert. We are talking about governance, the ways of improving governance in estates. Today, we have an expert who is from a civil society, Mr. Roland Kweti, teacher. He was talking about how Cameroon moved from an emerging economy 
to what we are today, thinking of getting to emergence in 2035. Yeah, Mr. Roland, yes. Kwete, you were talking of how when the president came to power, you know, he could not bite the finger feeding him. He needed some protection. Of course. So what about that? So, uh, as I was saying, uh, I said you can never bite the finger that puts so an arrow into your mouth. It's impossible. Yeah. So, uh, I said, when uh, the president's uh, authority was threatened, he needed that arsenal besides yeah. him. And you know, such a position can only be a position of trust, people whom you trust. And you cannot claim to trust somebody, and from time to time again, you are checking on that person to see if the person is um, uh, if man if is managing well or well, not. Yeah. You align yourself. You see. You consider all what that person says uh, to be uh, gospel. Let me put it so to be some sort of gospel, gospel truth. truth yeah. Yes. So you cannot like uh, uh, if I need your assistance. I mean assistance not because I'm hungry or whatsoever, but I mean maximum capital assistance uh, for a, a situation like that, security like that, I think um, that was one of the ways through which uh, state funds started getting looted and looted without any control. Any control. And not just to end at that, you know the 1996 constitution even came up with um, an article, that is article 66. Uh, that article was there to encourage top state officials, oh, the president of the republic, or oh, the chances, the chances, uh, the, the grand, chancellor, the of, grand national chancellor of national order, yeah. the prime minister, in short, top government administrators were supposed to uh, uh, declare their or assets. make public yeah. their assets while getting into office within their time in office and while going out, out of office, office yeah. they were supposed to declare their assets so that at one point in time we could know if he was being enriched illicitly or not because you you can you, you fight corruption yeah but you cannot at one point say this house this 20 story building you are building you do not deserve, deserve it. it yeah. Your salary does not. You have. You haven't that power. So long as Article 66, which is in our Constitution, hasn't been given that push, the yeah, degree of application, yeah. the degree of application of Article 66 is still to be uh, uh, still to be signed by the head of state. That um, we are talking of 1996. 96. That's about 22 years after. Now it gives some of us. Of the from civil society organizations, that question that is the political will really there to push yeah. to boost out corruption? Because I don't see why. Just sign, we've been signing decrees every now and then, but why not sign a decree to apply this article? Yeah. Why is it so difficult if we really want to fight corruption? Okay, we have several institutions that have been put in place to fight corruption. For example, let me just talk of one: the Ministerial Anti-Corruption Unit, Unit, which is <clears throat> which is very capital in the fight against corruption. Is, which is supposed to be, <laughs> yeah. is supposed to be supposed very to capital be. in the fight against corruption, because this is uh, an institution that is made up of common people. We have members of the administration and representatives of uh, the civil society. society. Now the question is, this institution, which is so important because members of the civil society can easily get in touch with people, people. in the community, on the field, and then report it to the minister. But uh, behold, you are appointed, as members are appointed by the minister, but they, and they are dismissed by the, the minister. minister. As a minister who validates their report, mm -hmm. who sends their report to the National Anti-Corruption Commission, which is CONAC, mm -hmm. then even take now the financial aspect of it. How much you go from ministry to ministry? It is not up to anything significant. I mean, the budget uh, allocated for the fight against corruption or for the enhancement of good governance within these ministries. I mean, it is insignificant. 
Okay, so uh, uh, the fight against corruption still needs, uh, Cameroon still has a long way to go. To go. Mm. Can we talk about the principles of good governance? Are there some principles to be laid down for a country to move <sighs> towards in governance matter? Uh, yes, of course, Mr. Bisson. Okay. Uh, there are principles. Which are? The principles are our laws. Okay. If you follow the laws, if you follow <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. If you follow the laws, you will see that if you follow the law rightly, everything will be okay. Okay? But if it's true, or that when you want, talking specifically, you know, um, there are inside in corporate, corporate governance, for yes. example, we have companies which go further beyond the laws to come up again with what they call codes of ethics. Yeah. A code of ethics that should be. Uh, that should be respected by all the members or all the workers, the workers yeah, of that company. True. They come up with a set of rules that before you get into that company, you sign that engagement. engagement yeah. Okay. So uh, th they set, they put up a set of principles for their company. Okay. Mm -hmm. And as uh, as you as you will notice, uh, these sets of rules can never be the same from one comp from company A to company, company B. A, yeah. <clears throat> For example, if someone should go to Saudi Arabia or let me just say a Muslim country, for example, you establish a company. They will tell you, okay, maybe during the Ramadan period, from this time to this time is prayer time. That's true. But if you go now to a purely uh, Christian country, you want to come out with something like that, that during Ramadan period, people will look at you as a mad person. So we have principles. But if you want to start laying out the principles now, per corporation, you will see that um, the principles will be as almost as many as the different types of cooperation, cooperation that's and at the same and, and the number the different types of communities and societies. So. Uh, uh, there the, the are principles, principles of good governance, principles of uh, uh, good behavior. They are there. But now, are they very general? Yes, but the question mark is somewhere on them. All right. Mm. So, uh, thanks very much, Mr. Kweti Teacher. We have to follow this other report made by Christian Esime. Viewers of Seven News Television, let's just try to follow this report made by Christian Esimi, where the poor of Kribi. Christian Esimi, let me get what you have to say. Grand semble être le défi auquel est confrontée l'entreprise Capemo engagée comme elle est en ce moment, à produire un peu d'efficacité autour du terminal polyvalent du port autonome de Kribi, objet de la signature d'une convention de collaboration le 9 juillet dernier entre les deux institutions pour une durée de 24 mois éventuellement renouvelable. Aujourd'hui, l'entreprise ne se donne plus aucune forme de répit autour de ce terminal en multipliant des rencontres et en construisant régulièrement des plateformes de plaidoyer susceptibles de traduire en actes contraire les idées jusqu'ici explorées. Le port autonome de Crivi présente des atouts qui ne sont pas ceux du port de, de, de Douala. C'est-à-dire que l'offre de Crivi vient compléter celle de Douala pour l'accueil des navires de grande dimension. Et nous avons en plus de cela des formidables conditions nautiques hein, qu'on retrouve à Crivi qui devraient faire du port autonome de Crivi et des terminaux qui s'y trouvent des destinations privilégiées des chargeurs et des consignataires. Donc, euh, toutes les parties sont gagnantes, l'État, l'autorité portuaire, les opérateurs des terminaux, ainsi que les chargeurs. La rencontre du 20 septembre dernier, qui avait pour cadre l'hôtel La Marée à Kribi, s'inscrit donc dans ce sillage de recherche permanente de la performance en essayant de vendre à la fois ses faits d'armes et les multiples opportunités qu'offre ce terminal aux divers acteurs. Et euh, nous allons d'abord commencer par remercier les autorités camerounaises en général et le port autonome de Kribi en particulier d'avoir donné 
l'opportunité aux entreprises camerounaises à travers KPMO d'affirmer et de montrer l'expertise nationale. Et à ce niveau, nous devons dire que les choses se mettent rapidement en place. Ainsi donc, dos au mur, forcé à produire du résultat, KPMO se présente désormais dans le secteur au niveau du port autonome de Kribi comme la caution morale des entreprises nationales pour les prestations à venir. Nul doute que dans cette perspective, si elle venait à échouer, les conséquences pourraient être dévastatrices pour ces entreprises autour d'un terminal qui suscite déjà des envies au-delà des frontières nationales. Je suis séduit parce que j'ai vu, euh, ça me fait vraiment plaisir, c'est un nouveau pôle de développement qui est ainsi créé. Et je crois que ce port qui est né, comme je l'ai dit tout à l'heure à son directeur général, est, il est né leader. C'est en tout cas le souhait que formule l'ensemble de la communauté nationale pour le rayonnement effectif de l'économie de toute la sous-région Afrique centrale et même au-delà. I do appreciate you, Christian Esimi, for that report about the Kribi Seaport. Viewers of Seven News, gradually, we are drawing our curtain close. One time American president, the second president of the United States, a founding father made this statement. Because power corrupts, society's demands for moral authority and character increase, as the importance of the position increases. This statement was made by John Adams, the second US president. Viewers of Seven News Television, we are talking about the ways to improve governance in a country. With us, is a member of a civil society who has a mastery of good governance. He's no other person than Mr. Roland, Kweti teacher. Mr. Roland, briefly, can you tell us the models, some of the models of good governance? Yes, sir. Mr. Bisson, let me ensure that I want to appreciate you for having read out uh, that statement by the former American and, uh, and by, uh, president. president. You see, uh, if you go uh, through the social contract by Jean-Jacques Rousseau, yeah. you will see that there is something virtual, <clears throat> it's not real, that exists between the governed and the governors. Mm -hmm. And this word mal governance comes in just, you see, if each party is respecting the, <clears throat> the terms of that contract. Mm -hmm. But we've always noticed uh, that uh, the government always have that pressing hand on the people, not respecting it. But mm -hmm. this contract tells us somewhere that at one moment, if the people feel, if, what, if any party feels so oppressed, it can do, like the people can do some sort of a revolution to keep aside that government and put in place a government, a government that yeah. it talks a lot, that social contract. Coming back to your question, you see, um, there is a formula for corruption a formula is not mathematics but it is a small <laughs> it's a formula yeah they tell us corruption is equals to uh, they call it uh, that's monopoly plus discretion minus accountability okay <clears throat> monopoly monopoly plus, plus discretion, discretion minus, minus account accountability equals to equals to corruption, corruption. <laughs> <laughs> at least i've some yes to you today. yes so uh when you if you if you if you have uh, that that equation on mind you will discover that any society which wants to be a mother must apply that formula okay make sure you keep a uh, discretional powers off make sure you keep a monopoly off okay. and make sure you encourage accountability. accountability any society which will do that will enjoy good governance uh, you see there are a lot of discretional powers that are given to many of our authorities discretional powers he is answerable to no one to no one that's true yes he's answerable to no one so uh, because of that 
it gives room for mal governance to be established. There is this a form of corruption that um, many, many, many Cameroonians uh, do not really, that we've not given it the importance it deserves. They call it petite corruption. Excuse me, because we have a grand corruption and we have petite corruption. We have medium as well. But petite corruption, the effects of petite corruption are alarming on the common man. Mm, yeah. More than the effects of grand corruption. corruption. Grand corruption, yeah, we're talking about uh, corporations, the build, construction of roads, construction of stad stadium, stadia like uh, the Olembe. They, they can give an official some money and then maybe they turn around. But now, petite corruption is of this type where we talk of what the common person losses on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. For example, from market from village or from farm to market, if you look at the type of vehicles that ply such routes, farm to market routes, they usually they are commonly called clandos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and along the way, there are law and other officials. I used to ask one question. These vehicles, are they roadworthy? Do they have their roadworthy certificate? certificates? The roadworthiness certificate. Do these people have this certificate? I mean, you look at the state of the car, it's deplorable. But ask one of those officers, are these cars up to date physically and physically? Are their fiscal obligations met? And then the physical state, is it okay of the car? But you will discover that for the whole day, no car will be impounded. Simply because of <clears throat> that small business that goes on between, between yeah. the driver and the and law the and of the other official. That's true. And when this man, when the driver gives his money to the law and other official, he recovers it from the passenger. Mm -hmm. If transport was supposed to be 500 from the farm to the market, now he will say 500, uh, he will take it from 500 to 600 francs for the five passengers he's carrying so that the extra 500 that he gave to that officer is covered. You understand? Yeah. So you see how it it, it, it touches the it touches directly the common man. When this mama now reach the market upon selling her goods, she will consider too that her transport was increased yeah. along the way. And she will now sell her goods a bit more expensive in order to recover what she lost uh, to the law and order official through the direct through the driver. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Kweti. No, the pleasure is mine. If, if we want to talk about governance, I don't think we're going to finish today. It's impossible. It's okay. impossible. <laughs> the team here at Seven News should know that uh, good governance is a that governance is a super broad topic. Okay, <laughs> uh, thanks for coming, Mr. Kweti. No, the pleasure is mine. Seven I hope News. you will not reject our invitation. Maybe <laughs> next time. No, it's, it, will, it will be a pleasure to be with you guys. Okay, viewers of Seven News Television, we have come to the end of this program. They're experts. The curtains are being closed. This program is a success thanks to the people working that you don't see. We have the cameramen, we have the editors, and we have those right behind a secret room manipulating the buttons for you to get the images right thanks a lot i love you all and may god almighty bless your day bye for now <laughs>